Every of single. Every, no, all, it says. In the original Koine Greek, in the New Testament, the word all means what? All. 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 Everything. Mm -hmm. Not just cancer. Mm -hmm. Not just arthritis. All diseases. Should all I... sicknesses. I... Okay? Amy could attest to that. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, along the line of physical torment, in addition to certain diseases and so on, I believe all diseases. Some people will say, no, there's any, you can't think. I, I, I believe all diseases. Disease is a okay? disease. Okay? And I've gone round and round and round about this with a lot of different people. I don't care. You know, just because they haven't done it or God hasn't done it through them, okay, or any other of these huge names out there, doesn't mean that it can't be done. Okay? Doesn't mean that. I believe the word of God. The word of God says all. Yes. All right. There wasn't one that wasn't healed when Jesus went around. D there you go. And there you go. When his disciples came he back. Physical the torment. Mountain, they said that everything happened. Even the demons were subject to There you to go. Death. That's right. Mm -hmm. prime, prime example of physical torment, which could lead to death. Now, you know what? I'll save that one for here in a few minutes. Physical torment, I'll give you a personal story of my own. Kathy and I went, we were called to a hospital by people that I know that own a coffee shop near me, okay? Which the other day told me that I'm the happiest person they've ever known. <laughs> I said, dude, Jesus loves me and he loves you too. What's not to be happy about? <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I was asked to go pray for this woman's mother, another coma victim, all right, exactly the same pattern, all right, but this was different. Her, her torment, as soon as I heard the symptoms, I knew it was demonic because it was straight out of Scripture, dude. Mm -hmm. It was the bleeding woman. This woman, when this woman asked me to go, it was on, a, I think, a Wednesday night, Thursday, okay? It wasn't a church night, okay? So it was Thursday. She asked me to go in the afternoon. I told her, I said, you know what? I said, I can't make it today. I said, Kathy and I will go first thing in the morning. Okay? She called me that night, and her mother was in a regular room at that time. She called me 9 o'clock that night. She said, my mother's in a coma. She's died. They're telling me that she's got 48 hours to live. All right? They say She's got uncontrollable bleeding. They don't know what's going on. They don't know where it's coming from. There's no reason for it whatsoever. Okay? She got a whole team of doctors working on her, and nobody knew what was happening. I knew what was happening immediately. As soon as I heard the description, I said, that is demonic. I said, we'll be there at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. All right? We went. Had a whole family there of non-believers. <laughs> A whole family of non-believers. <laughs> okay. And the first thing I told them, I said, you know what? You could stay. All right. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you stay, you may see and hear some things that you've never seen or heard before. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do our thing. All right. And you observe if you want. Okay. I'm, I told them, I said, you may hear us speak in another language that you don't understand. The whole thing, don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all God. It's all biblical. Okay? We started in. We started, and, and we read scriptures over her. We did everything. We used the word of God over her, which I do on every single appointed deliverance. Okay? If it's appointed, I have the person read it in front of me. You have to read the word of God. It, it, it makes the demons come out. Our okay. family members also read along or you give them the scriptures. That's right. So that That's as right. they're speaking it, they're coming into agreement whether they know it or not. Exactly. Exactly. And so we went. whole thing took five minutes. Boom, boom, boom. There was three spirits that popped out with the loudest.
last one popped out, the woman opened her eyes for about a second. Opened her eyes, and I actually saw her eyes roll back in her head, and she went out again. Okay? That was good enough for me. I knew that that took. Okay? Here was a woman that was dead for all yeah, intents and purposes. Blood out of her mouth. I mean, exactly. She had blood leaking out of her mouth. I mean, the whole thing. I mean, exactly. she was down and out, dude. She was gone. <laughs> all right? The next day, the next morning, I got a phone call. I mean, she woke up. She wants to eat. Ooh, and she had to eat before. No, she wouldn't eat before. She wouldn't do it. Praise God. That's right. Praise yes. Him. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, so, well, same thing happened. The, the, and I want to tell you this, though. And, and Kathy's a witness, all right? In the middle of this deliverance, the power of God was so strong in that room that her husband and, and two or three granddaughters, at one point I, I happened to notice, they were all in a corner like this, huddling and crying their eyes out because the power of God fell like a blanket in that place, dude. They had never experienced that before. And as a result, the entire family has come to God. And, and she's with the Lord now, and there's peace in the family. Exactly. Mm -hmm. She passed away. She was, she, the, <laughs> After she and, and this is, we talked about this and talked about this, okay? Mm -hmm. And the conclusion is that God will save a person from death to save their family. To, the, the, it, 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 the, the deliverance was so profound, okay, just like it was with Larry's sister. It was so profound, and it was so defined, and it was so in your face that there's no avoiding it. There's no saying, oh, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It happened right in front of their face. To go along with what we were saying, I hate to interrupt, but no, to no, go no. along with it, when she was at the other place over at the ocean side, yes. unexplainable bleeding was the reason that they started taking her to the other hospital. Oh, dude, I didn't they even know that. Not, they could not find out where it was coming from <laughs> or where, why. I did not out. even know that part That's of it. That's why I wanted to bring that. I don't know if everybody heard, but Larry's sister, he just said that the reason that she was put in that facility where I went to begin with was unexplicable bleeding. Exactly. Exactly the same thing. And they, try, they tried uh, three or four times to uh, locate what's going on, and they oh. couldn't. That's why she went to a, a major hospital. But well, she did not die from that. I mean, just from... Exactly. The thing is, they don't it, die from this unexplainable demon, demonized, whatever it is. Yes. They'll die from something else in their body, yeah. you know, because, it, because of whatever reason. Right. And in both yeah. of those cases, mm -hmm. they both died from something totally unrelated. Okay. There was the family was, and, and, was, and was beautiful about it. Th they were sad, it. but the, the, you know, they were just. And it has woken up the whole family. I'm in that coffee shop almost every day. And every day they're asking me questions. Yeah. Every day they're hungry for the word of God now. Every day they want more and more and more. You know? And a couple months ago I started to talk to the. To, because I, I don't know, it wasn't this. But any, I can tell you, two weeks ago, I was in the middle of writing this course, okay? And the husband happened to pass by, and he saw one of these pictures. <laughs> he said, what's that? <laughs> I said, well, I'm writing a course on, on, on the demonic spirit. And he said, oh, he said, I can tell you all about that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> he said, and this is an unbeliever that did this. But he knew, he knew in his unbelieving life that demons existed. Okay? I can't remember specifically what the situation was. It was something with his child. All right? And he walked out in the backyard and he commanded 
the spirits, the unclean spirits, to leave in the name of Jesus. And he wasn't even a believer. And they left. <laughs> you telling me that, that, that God won't use an unclean vessel? There's nothing more unclean than an unsaved person. That person called on the name of Jesus, and he responded like that. All right? As a result, now the entire family knows God. All right? Mental torment. I just want to uh, mention that uh, it, it, probably the best uh, example I can give you of mental torment is fear. Okay? Uh, fear is one of the strongest demonic forces that there is. Fear will actually... Uh, it, 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 it's stifling. It's, it's, it will strangle you. Literally, man. Uh, and, and this also proves out a couple of things. It proves the uh, demonic spirit of fear, and it also proves that a Christian, uh, an extremely strong Christian, okay, can be demonized and almost killed by a demonic spirit. All right? I'm talking about Kathy. Everybody knows Kathy. Everybody knows her experience. Everybody knows that when she worships, dude, she spends half the time on the floor. <laughs> you know, she's, she's ministered with Georgie Banoff. She's ministered with Heidi Baker. She has prayed for ears to open, and ears have opened. Okay? This is a, a, a strong, strong, strong believing Christian. Last year, August, I think it was, um, She'd been gone for five days in Texas. I had to go pick her up at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. I was taking her to teach the School of the Prophets directly from the airport uh, to uh, Randy Lechner's uh, place up in Coral Gables to teach School of the Prophets that night. Okay, she's been teaching School of the Prophets for a dozen years or so. Okay, and when I picked her up, I knew immediately something was wrong. She wasn't herself. Anybody that knows Kathy knows that she's little Miss Chatterbox. Okay. Well, you are. <laughs> she can talk and talk and talk. She's like, you know, the... the <laughs> but, but, well, you are. What was she and, you, and, and she's always bubbly. She's always happy. She's always positive. And she, she got in the car and was dead silence, dude. I mean, dead silence. It was like it wasn't even her that I was sitting by. Okay? And we got on down the road, and I'm trying to talk to her. I'm trying to pull her. Nothing. Nothing. She wouldn't talk. And she starts grabbing her chest. Okay? And it, it, long story short, not to get in, into like, uh, but it got so bad that. This, what it, this thing was trying to strangle her. It was not. And it was it doing a really lungs. good job of it. Okay? Something That's where it ended up, oh. was in your stomach. Mm -hmm. Okay? But it got so bad she couldn't breathe, she was gasping for air. Okay? I, we came down, I had to get off at 25th Street on 826. I, and you know how close that is to Bird Road. Okay? like five minutes. I couldn't wait that long. All right? I honestly thought that another five minutes she would have been dead. I was already cold. All right? Was she was leaving. already cold. Her lips and were I was blue. already leaving. The whole nine. I was leaving. Okay? We pulled over. I pulled into the, the first little shopping center there on the south side of 25th Street, uh, west of, of uh, 826. Okay? And, I mean, people are walking by. <laughs> And I start casting this thing out. Long story short, we were there for 45 minutes. It was a knock down, drag out, all no holds bar, bar fight is what it was. You know, it got down to where I was actually, it, it had moved, she could breathe. All right, and it had moved to her stomach, okay? And it got down 
to where I was actually in the spirit and physically acting it out and screaming at the top of my lungs for this thing to leave her. I was reaching into her and pulling this thing out of her. In the spirit. Okay, in the spirit. Okay? And it was, dude, it was, to this day, it's the most strenuous, strenuous, and probably the, the, the most dangerous deliverance that I've ever been involved with. Because I'm telling you, she almost died. Okay? And this is a Christian leader who has taught Christian leaders. Okay? You can be demonized. A, a demon can be inside you, actually, and lay dormant for years and years and years and not manifest itself. Especially in prenatal. Okay? And it can be sitting there and waiting for the opportunity to spring out. And I believe that's exactly what happened with that. And I wanted to go. That. I mean, I, I saw a little hole right there, and I was going through it. Yeah. I was, go I was going through it. She was already heading to the light, so to speak. Yeah. Okay? Because, yeah. I'm telling you, it was that close. Now, that's not possessed, but that is being controlled. Okay? I think there's a thin line there. It's controlled to a certain point. Okay? To controlled in the aspect of this thing was choking the life out of her. Okay? Put it that way. Yes? My reason for asking is because I've known of people who were just attacked, but they weren't submitting to it. Like yes. They would joke. Yes, yes, yes. yes. God An attack can be a temporary... Uh, thing, okay? Uh, it, it, I'll give you a prime example, uh, it, it, my own personal thing. After we did this, it, it actually involved you, and it involved the other, the bleeding woman in March, okay? Uh, and it, it, it also involves you, Larry, what you're going through right now, yeah. okay? And that is uh, started with uh, it started with you. Actually, no, it started with the bleeding woman. She was first. Okay? And starting that very night, I got, I couldn't sleep. Okay? It, it started like restless legs. You know what restless leg syndrome is? Mm -hmm. Where your legs start oh, yeah. dancing, oh. you get nervous, you can't go sleep, and you know, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and it stayed that way for like uh, two or three days. That Friday night, Kathy and I went up to a, uh, a session, what we thought was going to be <laughs> a prophetic session with K.K. Chen. It turned out to be a school of the spirit where we were, uh, everybody that was there, we got paired off into twos, and we had to, our assignment was to pray in the spirit, to pray in tongues, okay, and come up with a word of knowledge for our partner to see what God gave us as a word of knowledge for our partner. And when we would do this, we would pray for only like three or four minutes. That was it. And there wasn't one single person there all night long that said, I didn't get anything. Not one. Okay? And the words that were given were spot on. Mm -hmm. The first word that I gave to this pastor was, You've been thinking about making a change or doing something new or, or something, whatever it was. And I'm telling you, God is telling you to step out and do it. He knew exactly what it related to. Okay? The word of knowledge that he gave over me, his exact words were, you're being attacked in your bed at night. <laughs> How's that for spot on accurate? Holy Spirit, word of knowledge, direct from the throne room. Okay? You're being attacked in your bed at night. Starting in the next code, we did, uh, 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 we had Renee's deliverance, and that night, it got ratcheted up. Tremendously. Tremendously. Which ratcheted? Got jacked up. It got, got intensified, got intensified, okay, got worse. Okay? okay, to the point where from that point on for the next three weeks, 
Every single night when I tried to go to sleep, it felt like I had a zillion insects crawling on me. I could not sleep for anything, dude. The only way that I could get to sleep was I would get up, I would anoint myself, I anointed the doors, I anointed the windows, I anointed my bed sheets, I anointed everything. I started praying in the spirit, I started declaring peace, I started everything. It was everything that I could do to get an hour and a half of sleep in a, a night. All right? And I, that's just the way it was. You know? I mean, I believe. I believe in, in anything as a possibility. You know, because I believe that what the Word of God tells me. So you're saying that was a, a direct attack? That was a direct attack. That was not a demonization. That was an attack. And that's what you're going through. Yeah. Okay? Which we're going to handle right here, even, right now. Even the thing about the insects that you said? Yes. That you're talking about? You they're getting not, that too? They're not in my bed. They're yeah. not in my bed. I no. Know, but I, I used to get I, up in the middle of the I night and turn a light on to see if there was fleas or something. I can feel, <laughs> I can feel them crawling and biting me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I sure can. Yes. And my, and my, and my leg dancing was cramps. Yes. I mean physical okay. cramps oh, wow. that knocked me out of the bed. Yes, 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 yes. And that's because, for those that don't know, Larry is a is ministers in prisons. He goes in, and I've heard stories of there's more miracles happen in prisons than you could ever imagine, dude. You got prisoners in prisoner in prisons that are praying in tongues off the wall. They're praying, they're, they're praying in the spirit. They're getting saved like boom, boom, like popcorn. All right? It's unbelievable stuff. And as a result, he's paying the price. He's paying the price. But what did we say last week? What did we establish? What, rule number one, the more work that you do for the kingdom, the more attention you draw to yourself from the other side. And as a result, the more you're going to come under attack. It's pretty much that simple. Not only the physical torment uh, and the mental torment, but also the spiritual torment. Okay? Because it had me thinking, what am I doing wrong? Because I was praying like a mad. I, I had so much oil in my room. <laughs> It was like I could have fried French fries, dude. <laughs> you know? And it wasn't stopping. You know? And it can make you think, what's up with this? How come he's not coming to my rescue? You know? That spiritual torment. You know? But you know that if you keep faith, okay? that he will arrive, which he did. And I haven't had anything since then. Not a thing. Not a thing. So uh, I'm going to leave you on, on another uh, personal uh, testimony. Uh, that, uh, just a second. Uh, this past uh, Sunday, I told you that uh, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, two or three months ago, I don't know what it was, I, I was told that I, had, I was diagnosed with COPD, blah, blah, blah. And from the very beginning, and I was supposed to go back for further tests and all this stuff, and, and um, I refused to own that, okay? I refused to accept that word from a physician. Anyway, uh, last week I was thinking about 1 John 5, 14, okay, uh, that uh, if you can go there and I'll go there with you, so I read the, uh, uh, says this, this is the confidence which we have before him, 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked of him. Think about that. All right. Derek Prince, in another book of his, uh, How to Become a Prayer Warrior, talks about this very thing. That, uh, and Mahesh Shabda talks about the same thing all the time. That the secret to successful prayer is praying according to God's will. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not according to what you want. Not praying what you want and hoping that God will line up with you. Okay? Uh-uh. You pray according to God's will. How do we know what God's will is? Know his word. His word. Mm -hmm. Knowing his will demands that you know his word and his heart, which is totally separate. Mm -hmm. His heart is revealed in his word, but it's a separate thing. And the more that we pray correctly, which is my definition of prayer, is fellowshipping with him. The more we fellowship with God, then the more we come to know his heart. Okay? Last Sunday, I thought about that scripture. You know, and I was driving here, as a matter of fact, it was Sunday morning. And I thought to myself, well, it's not God's will for me to have COPD. It's emphysema. So I denounced it, and I commanded the spirit, as I was driving down the road, mm -hmm. I commanded the spirit of COPD, whatever that is, okay, to leave me in the name of Jesus. And I got to tell you that I coughed up a hunk of yellow crud that was mm -hmm. unbelievable. As we go on, when we get into the fourth session uh, of, of these teachings, you're going to learn that demons lead 90% of the time by way of the mouth. Okay? I have not had one instance of shortness of breath Hallelujah. or anything else Jesus. in a week. Praise God. Okay? Praise yeah. God. 